Good morning. I want to thank Father Minas, who's not here today. He's substituting for the Greek Orthodox priest in Ventura County, and Deacon Andrew, who served last Sunday with our substitute choir director, William Grundler, and Subdeacon Richard Agilat, my pastoral assistant, for his sermon, who is also the director of our youth ministry. I was watching. <laughs> it all went well. You know, I was two hours ahead. You know, it's good to be back in Southern California and out of the cold, wintry South. And the North, by the way, which today is undergoing tremendous winter cold, uh, especially in the Midwest, where Charmaine has been in touch with me. So, you see, live streaming has many benefits. <laughs> However, it's not to be abused. If you have the ability to get to church, be in church, in person, to prepare to receive the sacraments. I was born in the Deep South, the southernmost state in the U.S., such as where we in California pay a price for better climate. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Christ is in our midst. In commenting on today's gospel, the church fathers point out that although Bartimaeus was physically blind, his eyes, that is the eyes of his soul, were illumined by God's grace because he had believed what he had heard from others about Jesus. The saints also speak of blind Bartimaeus as an example of earnest and humble prayer. I'll be talking about our prayer discipline as a rule at the end of my message, so I want you to stay tuned. The fathers say, every time we come to Christ in prayer, we should approach him as blind beggars and cry out to him to receive new light day by day. This is very similar to what we will soon come to hear in the parable of the publican and the Pharisee as we begin our preparation for Great Lent in another month. Bartimaeus was not just a blind man. He faced another obstacle. The passage described that there were those in front of him who, who rebuked him, telling him to be quiet. You're a pest. But knowing who was passing by, even though blind, Bartimaeus cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy upon me. <laughs> For those of us who are not physically blind, <clears throat> We may know what to want for ourselves. However, you and I may not also know what is always best for us. Those who stood in front of Bartimaeus, who prevented him by being heard by Jesus, may have thought that they knew what was best. But did they? What did those who were the obstacles of Bartimaeus expect of Jesus that was different from what blind Bartimaeus needed? Were, there any better, were they any better than a blind man by being able to see the Lord? Tell those in the back to come out, please. In 2016, Faith Tree Resources published a book called Removing Barriers. One out of five persons in our country have a disability. That means one out of five in the church have a disability. I say all of us have some kind of disability. It may not be physical, 
but in many cases psychological and emotional, maybe spiritual. Ultimately, it has an impact on our spiritual life. I'm very thankful for the hard work of Faith Tree Resources that provided us with this valuable resource and encourage you to visit their website to better understand how this is a very important and neglected ministry of our church. I'll be talking more about what Faith Tree is doing at the end of my message, so stay tuned. You and I know very well that we always don't get everything we want when we want it. Sadly, we live in a time of growing disparity between the haves and the have-nots. None of us feel good about not having the things we want when we want it. Our prayers are not always answered. Often when we want answers. In his letter to Corinthians, the Apostle Paul said, Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. It helps us to know ourselves if we know the difference. <clears throat> and we should know the difference. Prayer does not only provide us a means of getting or achieving our goals. <laughs> We can be very misguided spiritually by not understanding commitment and avoiding being double-minded in our thinking. There are thousands, if not millions of Americans today that are struggling with this disability, double-mindedness. Some people consider that their relationship with God is a bargaining enterprise. They say, if you can do this for me, God, I will do this for you. It's strange. Because it places you and I on par with God. It treats him as some unknown person. Now, while we teach that God is certainly all-knowing and all-powerful, everything that we've just celebrated, his birth, his baptism, and now learning about his ministry are not just good stories. God sent his son into the world to bring us illumination. And by his spirit, we are illumined. We have found the faith. Worshiping the undivided trinity like we sing every Sunday at every liturgy. What does that mean? Blind Bartimaeus knew. <clears throat> in fact, the leper last week in the gospel, who was the only one that returned to give thanks to the Lord for his healing, also knew illumination. While the other nine who were takers got what they wanted, and went on their merry way. <laughs> it's okay. God is not mocked. He even allows it. In one of the morning prayers of Orthros, we hear these words, We give thanks unto thee, O Lord our God, for our salvation, for thou does all things which are for the welfare of our life that we may ever look up to thee, up, our Savior and our benefactor of our souls. And then another prayer with these words, and grant us all of our partitions which are unto salvation. Grant us our salvation. There is no blessing of God, repeat, there is no blessing of God that would allow you and I to look down upon anyone, such as was the case with those who were preventing blind Bartimaeus from being heard 
by Jesus. We have lots of seats on this side. I repeat, there's no blessing of God that would allow you and I to look down upon anyone such as was the case with those who were preventing blind Bartimaeus from being heard by Jesus. And so when you and I actually begin thinking as the church teaches us to pray, we will know peace and contentment, and may even end up receiving more than we ask. <laughs> you see, when we're focused on the right things, we make personal cho choices every day of our lives. We also teach our children the importance of making good choices, to have good judgment, to be responsible for their decisions. However, as much as we try, some things are not easily learned except by experience and at times by making mistakes. So here are some simple takeaways from today's lesson. First, remind yourself of those who offend and sin against you when you call upon God for forgiveness. Repeat. Remind yourself of those who offend and sin against you when you call upon God for forgiveness. Second, that might help you learn how to forgive. <laughs> Think about how you might be acting or behaving in ways that could be harmful to others. How, in fact, you could lead someone to be tempted, especially those who may not be strong in the faith. And third, if you and I want God to keep us free from all temptation, I mean, if you really want to be free from all temptation, consider how you can help others to face perils and misfortunes, just as we expect God to defend and protect us from the evil one. These are very basic, very simple things we can do, if we want to. There's a lot of good things you and I can do today if we begin thinking of ways to redirect many of our misguided and perhaps passionate thoughts and feelings. In our day, it's extremely important for you and I to be focused on the right things beginning with remaining engaged in a prayerful relationship with God, paying closer attention to the content of what you're praying. And there's a great deal to gain by praying with our minds, our hearts, and our bodies. That's the orthodox way. So, if you've never been to the Faith Tree Resources website and you are serious about a prayer life, go there, faithtree.org, and get the app called The Encounter. Or you can go to Apple, the Apple Store, and type in Faith Tree. And the encounter will immediately come up, add it to your electronic device or mobile phone. If you need help, <coughs> Elizabeth Waters, who's our contact person here at St. Michael, can help you before you leave church today. This, like everything else you do with your phones, will become a life-changing experience for you with many options of learning about prayer, in having the prayers read to you in your car when you're driving to work. And we also want to thank Lauren. Lauren. Lauren, I was going to say Elizabeth, that's her Christian name. <laughs> Lauren Baba, who was in charge of the music and putting together the app, as well as um, 
the Orthodox Christian Vision Foundation who helped fund the project. You know, we use our phones for a gazillion things. There isn't an item that I buy on any website that I'm so afraid to put my email address on because I will be harassed from now until kingdom come about options of what I can buy. And they know more about you than you know about yourself. Well, let me tell you, God knows more about you than you know about yourself. And you need a Christian tool to help you with the instrument that has taken over your life called your cell phone, if not your computer. So join the encounter and begin to develop a prayer life for yourself. Let us pray. O oh Christ our God, who at all times and places are worshipped and glorified, both in heaven and on earth, long-suffering, generous in mercy, and rich in compassion, who loves the righteous and is merciful to the sinner, who calls all to repentance through the promise of blessings to come. Receive, O Lord, at this hour our prayers and direct our lives according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, set our minds aright, cleanse our thoughts, and deliver us from affliction and distress. Surround us with your holy angels so that guided and guarded by them we may attain unto the oneness of the faith and to the knowledge of your glory. O thou who art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. See, it's all there. Pray the prayers of the church. God bless you.